Hi guys, welcome to Subscribers Draw My Nails episode 14. This is a holiday edition. If you're new here, this is the series where you guys design my nails by drawing them on a template I give you and then I try to recreate them in real life. Today, we're gonna have some super cool designs to do. Thank you to everyone who submitted a design. It's always so much fun looking through them and this time I was shocked at how many similar ideas you guys had. Per usual, any of the designs shown will be credited how the person wanted to be credited, either by their name or Instagram at, or nothing if that's what they wanted. Before we get into what I chose, I wanna get into some honorable mentions. There were a few of you that had the idea to turn my nail into a candy cane by like 3D sculpting it. That is a super cool idea. There was a ton of amazing hand-drawn art. These are just a few, but you guys are such good artists. Another similar idea a bunch of you had was to turn my nail into a gingerbread man, also 3D sculpted, which is just so fun. And then there was a few icicle nails, which I thought was such an amazing idea. So creative. Once again, thank you to everyone who submits a design. You guys make this type of video possible. I literally could not make it without you, so I appreciate you guys so much. Thank you always. In this video, I'm going to be doing five different designs. This was not a full hand design thing. This round was singular nail submissions. So let's get into the first one. Like I had said, you guys had a lot of similar ideas. One of them was a snowman, specifically a 3D sculpted snowman. But the one that I chose to specifically follow today is this one from Taylor. It's a very classic snowman. And I don't think I've ever done like a really thick 3D sculpture. So even though I haven't seen any snow at all so far this year, hopefully it will come this winter. Let's do this snowman. So today I am going to be doing all of the nails on stands like this. While I do normally prefer to do them on my actual nails, there's gonna be a lot of sculpting today. And the past couple times that we've done this, I feel like that's hurt the quality of the outcome. So I'm just going to do them on tips, but the stands are pretty at least. So I picked a stiletto nail for this. I might end up carving pieces out, but I'm just going to put a white base on just so it's still white from the sides. Then for each ball, I'm going to use my white sissy clay. I'm gonna need more of this stuff soon, probably. I also figured it would be so much easier to sculpt being able to use both hands. So I'm gonna need three different sizes. This will be the thumbnail, so this is going to be a pretty big snowman. I think the head would even be bigger than that. All right, tentatively there. I'm going to do all of the balls before I cure anything. Number two. And oh, that's the same size. Let's take a little bit off this one and roll it up. I am thinking now that this nail may be too long. So I'm just gonna snip some off. All right, that's better. That'll be the head, the middle piece, and the body, which may need to be even a little bit shorter or not. No, I think we're gonna be good. I don't want them to be just like giant <laughs> balls on top of the nail, so I am going to just kind of like squish them down and sculpt them down a little bit. This is kind of looking like the Michelin Man. Hopefully it'll look a little bit more like a snowman. I don't think I've ever been able to actually make like a perfect circular snowman. I haven't really ever lived in a place where we've gotten that type of snow and it stayed cold. Even if we get a bunch of snow, it never usually like stays for a long time. I do remember when I was a kid in New Mexico though, we had this like really, really strange out of the ordinary snowstorm where in my head remembering as a child which it could totally be skewed because i was a child the snow was like a foot or two high and it was crazy but i actually think that looks pretty good really cute so let's cure this for forever pretty much and they said that the snowman should be kind of sparkly like snow so not overly sparkly so i'm going to try something obviously my white isn't perfect on my snowman i have you know like a hair and maybe some other marbled color in there a little bit so i'm going to get out some white and then i have this gel and it has snowflakes on it so i felt like it would be perfect for it it's more of like a very very subtle blue shimmer what i want to do is just try 
try to mix these to just try to give the snowman a little bit of shimmer in there. Kind of like snow, like obviously it looks glittery, but it's more like shiny, shimmery looking. So maybe if I mix these together, it might not work. I might have to do something else also, but I felt like it'd be a fun try. I'll just mix that on up. All right, let's see. Hmm. Doesn't look like anything is really happening. Might need to just get out a bit of a more pigmented white. All right, switching to this art paint from Daily Charm. That's where these little stands are from also, by the way. On their like Black Friday sale, I bought a bunch of them for stuff like this. Felt like I wanted to be just extra fancy with it. That definitely looks better. And I'm torn between putting actual glitter on it or putting like a, you know, like shimmery top coat. Let's just try this one again, just over top to see if we can just get that little bit of shimmer. Okay, the shimmer is pretty subtle, but I think it's pretty accurate. I like it like that, just like a little something. Now we need to make all the little details. So let's start off with the like buttons, rocks, eyes, face, you know what I'm saying. For this, we're gonna just need some really teeny, teeny, tiny balls. So we need one, two, three, four, five, like small ones, and then also five micro ones. So I'll just cut apart this into hopefully about even slices. I wanna do these like with the clay opposed to just drawing them on because I feel like that's more accurate. But looking at it now, I think I'm going to do the mouth with gel and then the eyes and the buttons with this because the mouth is just so tiny, like way too tiny. All right, one ball, three balls, four. That one will also be an eye. And then now we just need one more small one for the button. Perfect. I will just attach those ones with gel so that I can cure them and they will stay nice and round. Now for the nose. Ooh, that's really bright. Is that all right? I can darken that up a tiny bit if I need to. And I'm just gonna cut this in half. And then I'm gonna cure these. And the last thing we're going to assemble separately are the arms. Oh look, I haven't even used this one before. This looks way more orange on the packaging, which is probably why I haven't used it yet. I mean, I opened it, but I forget easily. And then pretty much same deal for this. Just making some arms. I don't know how long the arm should be. I feel like it's also kind of hard to do these on my nails and wear them when they are sculpted with like little itty bitty details like this, because I'm pretty sure I would accidentally break the arms in like two minutes. Okay, hey, those are the two arms. And now somehow I need to make even smaller pieces for the fingers. Stick, please. Get it? A stick, haha. -ha. <laughs> kind of looks like a chicken claw, but it should look fine once we have them on. And lastly, let's start the scarf and the hat, but we'll have to finish them on the actual snowman because those things have to like lay nicely on it. You can't just like have it be straight on there. It has to like lay since it's supposed to be fabric. No, how did I manage to do that? Ugh. All right, there and the hat, I kind of have absolutely no idea. Kind of just like, I'm gonna need more than that. Let's bring the snowman back. I think we should put the scarf on first. Here we go. Oh. Ah, okay, all good. It actually needs to be longer. I didn't anticipate how big this would be. All right, let's try this. Much better. Oh, that looks so cute. And now for the hat. I wanna get the hat on before we put the eyes because I feel like if I just put the eyes on, we might get some weird spacing. I feel like I don't even know exactly to do. I kind of need to make it like a triangle almost, like almost hollow. Don't know. <laughs> um, hmm. I kind of knew the hat would be the hardest part of this, but I really was not anticipating like how hard. Like I just think I just didn't think about like what exactly to put on it almost. Cause part of the problem is since it's 3D, like I need to have it going around the head, like even towards the sides. I don't want it to just like suddenly stop. Like that would look so funky. This looks like it's taking over his face now. I think that's as good as we're gonna get from the top. I'm gonna need to clean up the sides, but that doesn't look too bad. It kind of looks a little strange. It's not great, but it's not terrible. I don't know. 
I cleaned up the sides of the head so that the hat goes all the way around and it's looking so cute. I need to do the little pom-pom on the top. I'm not quite sure how to get like a pom-pom texture. Maybe we'll just see if we can like stick it on. Here we go. Okay, so I put the pom-pom on there. I might do more with the hat. I'm not sure yet, but I just want to attach everything else before I do any small little itty bitty details. And I'll use just kind of like a bit of a thicker top coat for everything to attach. Shouldn't be too hard to make it attach. I'll probably make this whole thing shiny. I don't know. What do you guys, I was about to ask, what do you guys think? As if you could tell me before I do it. First the eyes. Ooh, that looks maybe too big. Yeah, it kind of looks like you got bug eyes going on. A little bit better. Okay, I was about to say if I should do it to the side like this, or if I should do it like straight on, but I feel like the side is gonna give a lot better of a look. So the nose will stay like that. Okay, now that I have the nose on, it looks a lot better. Very cute. I think I might cure that. I feel like it looks good. I feel like placement's good. I'll definitely have room to do the mouth. Okay, let's do the buttons. I'm a little bit scared to put on the arms, so that's getting some rhinestone glue to hopefully hold those on well. Will it hold? Oh my gosh, it will. I better cure it before it doesn't. Didn't quite think through that I had put the gel on the other side already, so let's see if we can get away with that or if I'm gonna have to file it off. Okay, yay, we're pretty much just left at a couple small things, so we need to put the mouth on. I'm gonna try to just do like the smallest dots ever, pretty much. For final details, I'm just going through and adding a few little gobs here and there of some jelly red, just to kind of add a little bit of texture for the details. The details that they drew, I feel like are a little too tiny for me to like draw and really make defined. So I figured I'd just add a bit of a height difference for them, which I do think helps. And now lastly, just a top coat. So I think I'm gonna just pretty much top coat everything with glossy. I feel like it's already kind of glossy and it looks good. And then I'm gonna go back and just make a couple small things matte, like the eyes and the buttons. I feel like that'll just make it a tad bit more realistic. And I'm gonna put it on with a brush so I don't flood anything. All cured with the shiny. And now I'm just gonna do those couple small matte top coats. Okay, yes, definitely love the matte top coat on there. I love this one. Our second general theme that I saw that I wanted to do was a Christmas tree nail. And all of the Christmas tree nails were so cute, but I'm going to follow this one specifically by Painted Positive. I like that the tree is like growing out of my nail, which I think is like a fun little almost illusion. We'll see, I mean, hopefully. So let's try it out. So I'm going to start with the trunk of the tree and then I'm gonna do something I've never done before for the tree and I have what I hope is a good idea for it. I'm gonna take coffee from a cart, probably do it too above here. It doesn't really matter if I go above because I can start the tree at any point and it'll cover it. So I'm just gonna be safe and do it like up to here. And a second coat and then we'll go in with some details. Then I went ahead and lightened that color a bit. And I'm not sure if you guys are gonna be able to see those like small little color differences, but that's pretty much just what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just kind of lighten it more for each coat and hope that that gives a good like wood effect. All right, that's probably enough messing around with it. Okay, so now for the tree, I'm going to take a nail form and I need to stick this a bit farther down. And my idea is pretty much to secure it to the back of the nail like that and then put acrylic over. And that way the acrylic doesn't drip, it goes onto the form and we can form a tree. So I feel like easiest would be literally just stick it like that, but you know, more. And so my first test is going to be to see if acrylic sticks to this sticky part like forever, if it doesn't ever peel off. So let's try that really quick. All right, acrylic time. I'm just gonna try it with this little brush really quick. Let's grab a little bit, don't need much. And we'll just set that down. While we wait for that to dry, it has come to my attention. I do not own a dark green acrylic anywhere. So we gotta make that really quick. 
So I have this green from Kira Sky and this black. I'm hoping I can just like mostly put in green and then just like a scoop of black. We'll see how that works out. Alrighty, let's scoop of black. Let's mix it up. Let's test. Okay, I think just a tiny bit more black like that. And we're good. Circling back to the acrylic, will it stick? It will come off. It's not fully dry though, but it came off, which means that's gonna make my life a lot easier. I'm going to secure this as much as possible, pretty much. Amazing. And then just to have a base on there, that way I don't have to do the acrylic super thick on top, I'm going to just put a base of green like this. And I'm also going to get it over the sides. That way everything can for sure stay together. The gel will cure on the nail and on the sticky thing. I know the gel will come off. I just wasn't sure if the acrylic would, but it's just a little bit around the edges. Probably don't need all of this like hanging down and weighing it down. So I'm gonna just... There we go. Let's begin the acrylic. I think that turned out to be a pretty good color. I'm gonna start off with a bigger bead just to kind of cover the whole thing and get a base down. All right, I'm gonna start building up to the point up here. We are gonna put a star on it, but just so it's not a super abrupt end. Okay, good. Now that I have my base down, I'm gonna try to go in with one of my small little mini acrylic brushes, but I just have such a hard time getting the right acrylic to powder ratio on these. I don't know why, just like never works out well for me. Okay, not too bad, not too bad. I'll go back and touch up little bits, but I kind of just wanna get the base of like each branch on cause that'll make me feel better. <laughs> And I've pretty much already accepted that I am going to have to file just a little bit for this. I was hoping, you know, really reaching that I could just sculpt it perfectly, but we all know that's not gonna happen. I'm gonna just touch up this side now. I'm going to finish the branches on this side and I will be back in one sec. So here it is. I'm actually really happy with how it's looking so far. I feel like it's somewhat even, even enough that some filing can make it a lot better. And I actually like a little bit of the texture on there, you know, very uh, tree-y. Anyway, I'm gonna take this part off now. Should be dry enough. And there we are. Again, I'm gonna do some filing on it, mainly just around the edges to clean up each layer. And then we can get on to decorating it. I did my absolute best making the sides even, but it's just not gonna be perfect. I'm going to put a base gel on everything just to hopefully even it out just a little bit. You know, maybe just fill in a couple of the very small divots that are there and give myself just a slightly more smooth base to draw the lights on. And I'm just going to wipe that really, really good. And then I wanna try an effect I've seen some people do where they use blooming gel to give the lights a like radiant effect. But first I'm going to just lay down the string. Hopefully we'll be able to kind of see it on here. I don't think I'm going to loop it like they did. I just feel like it's too small for me to do that. I don't think it'll turn out well. So I'm just going to do a normal like diagonal type. Okay, good start. So basically you put some blooming gel and then you put a dot of the color you're gonna use and it'll just sort of feather out and then end up looking like a radiant light after you put like another layer on of an opaque circle after. You feel? And I'm kind of just guessing a little bit for where these need to go. So I'm gonna do them in like a yellow, blue, red pattern. There's the yellow. All right, might've did a couple circles a little too big. Now the red. I actually really like how that's looking. I think it's gonna give the effect I'm wanting. I'm gonna let that red spread out for a second and I'm gonna cure it. 
Now I'm gonna go back in and do the little solid lights. And I'm using a thicker color gel just so that when I put this in here, it sticks up just a little bit. And now all we have to do is the star. I am going to use a pre-made star, but the one they have is yellow. So I'm going to need to paint that first. And they said yellow glitter for the star. This one's almost like an orangey yellow gold, but it's also reflective, which I feel like is very fitting for a tree. And finally, we are at a top coat. So I'm gonna add my top coat and then I'll add the star. I love the lights on there. I'll definitely have to do something like that in the future. Not necessarily with like Christmas lights, but just, I don't know, something. I just really like the effect. Oh my gosh, I dropped this. I about had a heart attack that I lost it. Does that star match? Oh, it doesn't, oh no. Okay, I'll be right back with another star in just a sec. All right, that one is much better. It does have some sparkle in it. Not like glitter, but some shimmer. And lastly, a top coat on the star. For this design, this was one of the craziest designs I think that was submitted. Just because of the concept, it is a working advent calendar nail by Ruby. They said to try to actually make it open and close and I'm so intrigued by that. I've been thinking so hard about how to make that work and I think I have a good idea on how to do it. I hope I can execute it well, but I am so excited to try something so different. I've never done something like this, so this should be a treat of watching me struggle. So I'm a little bit nervous about this nail. I've never even attempted anything like this before. So I'm just going to do kind of like each one individually. I'm going to start off with the base nail. That way I can do the top to like fit this nail. So this bottom part is pretty basic. We're starting off with a French tip candy cane nail. So I'm gonna put down some red. I have my white and then also a nude. So I got nude here. I'm going to start off with the white and just kind of line out my French tip. Ooh, I'll have to file that down. I'll do that towards the end. I don't wanna create any dust around here. And then now for the nude. This nude is definitely not gonna be like exact. Now for the peppermint. Hopefully this doesn't take me too long. Start at the center here. I'm kind of just skipping through this part. I feel like in a previous holiday edition of Draw My Nails, I did a peppermint type swirl nail and they are always somehow a lot harder than I anticipate. They trick me. Well, that went surprisingly smoothly. Now I'm just going to top coat this and we'll worry about like the glitter and the other stuff later. So let's move on to the top of the box. All right, I'm trying to see how long to make this a little mark. I custom mixed this color for the top, which actually is like one of my favorite colors right now. It's like a periwinkle, but like a little bit darker. I love like a blue, but it's almost purple. This one is definitely more blue, but just in general, one of my favorite colors. So now I'm gonna do the 31 and the lights again. I know we've done some lights already, but I'm gonna do these ones a little bit different just so it's not the exact same thing over and over. So I think I'm going to start with the box first and then go around it. Hmm, is that gonna be too small? I think it is. Don't think I'll be able to write numbers in there. Okay, try number two. This one is okay, but I need to clean it up and I can mess it up by cleaning it up. I think I'm gonna keep this shape and then I'm just gonna make the lines thicker so I have a good outline. Okay, now for the numbers, wish me luck. Oh my gosh, I scared myself. Was that my sign to just like go have dinner? I said, wish me luck and then I immediately dropped it and got gel everywhere. Now for the lights. So I'm going to use a jelly gel for this instead of what we did last time, just to kind of switch it up, give it a different effect. Alrighty, just gonna kind of do some random ones. 
And I can always go back and fill in. They seem like there's some missing. I'm not sure how well each one of these are gonna show up. Yellow's okay. I really like how this turned out. I really like the effect that the jelly gives. So now I'm going to top coat this and we can move on to the fun part. So they said to figure out a way to make a working advent calendar. So I am. I searched for some hinges for a little while. I was gonna order some on Amazon, but Amazon wasn't Amazoning. And so I went to Walmart and I found something with a hinge and here we are. So we're gonna actually make this open and close. Hopefully. These obviously have mini screws, but I don't know if we're gonna use the screws because I feel like it would just stick in. It's not thick enough. So I'll probably just glue this on and then put rhinestones or something in the center instead of screws. Same thing, right? All right, so let's do this. So I'm going to attach everything before I put anything inside because I purposefully picked a bit of a more structured tip to put on top so that there could be room on the inside for things. I don't know if when they drew this, they meant to put charms inside or draw it on, but I grabbed out little charms like these to try to put underneath. I need to somehow attach it on this side right here. I'm thinking maybe acrylic because otherwise I don't know how to like fill that gap. So I think acrylic is gonna be it. I'm gonna let this bead dry up a little bit since we're trying to attach things. I'm gonna do it right in the middle. Okay, let's see. And then a little bit more to like seal it in. Ah, look at that. So far so good. I have to really wait for this to dry so that we can put the other one on without ripping this one off. All right, all good, all attached. Now we have to attach the other one, which I'm a little nervous about. And by a little, I mean a lot. So I have to make sure it's like perfect on there and at the right spot, which is a bit difficult for this. Well, I'm just gonna put the acrylic on and go from there. Cause that's all I can really do. Okay, I'll squeeze through. I I think that's probably a good spot. I think I might need to move it up a little bit. Oh, I think it needs to get over more. Okay, there we go. Oh, no. All right, let's try again. I think it needs to stick out a little bit more than I honestly would prefer and like kind of float a little bit on top of the acrylic, not like be shoved down as far as it can go. So I'm pretty much just gonna hold it like this and have it cure and hope that it's in the right spot and then we can evaluate if it's not. Yeah, it needs to be over more. Dang. Okay, I'll have to add more afterwards, but I think it's good right there. Make sure that acrylic doesn't dry on the hinge. I'm gonna let this dry now. I am so excited to try it. Y'all ready to see? So it does close, but not perfectly. I think the top is a little bit tilted. And also I think I just need a smaller hinge in general. This takes up a lot of room in the back and it has to go in at an angle where it takes up a lot of room in it kind of. And so that is also what's preventing it from closing. You can see that the hinge is hitting the bottom part and that's not letting it close all the way, but there's not really much I can do. I filed off what I could of the acrylic that is attached to this. And I couldn't really like put it all on the side here. It just like wouldn't close right. So I feel like, you know, if we look at it from like this angle, it looks great, but let's see if we can put anything inside. I did try to file out some acrylic, like I said. So I might be able to fit like one thing, maybe. Nope. I don't think I'm gonna be able to fit anything. Have like that space right there. Okay, they said I can customize it. So I'm pretty much just going to put some rhinestones inside just to do some of the sparkle. I'm not gonna put any of the other stuff inside. It just like will not fit. I could paint it on, but I'm not gonna, <laughs> to be honest. My dog stepped on these the other day and it flipped this. And now every single one of these is all mixed together. I mean, it was my fault for having it on the floor, but it still sucks. And there we have it. Now coming off of such a crazy design, I thought I would give myself a little bit of a break and do something with a simple base, but something still really fun that I can sculpt out. So we're going to be doing this nail with a Little Debbie snack cake charm. This design is by Haley. I couldn't tell you the last time I had one of these, but I'm still super excited to make it. So let's do it. So let's make the little snack 
cake. I don't know why that sounds so awkward to say. Hopefully I have enough of this white in here. Oh, okay, I should. Okay, I'm gonna get a tiny bit more because it looks pretty big on the nail. There we go. I'm gonna just mush all of this together because I might have accidentally gotten a couple little spots of the other clays in here while I'm grabbing stuff out. Okay, perfect. You know what I want? Like a little mini like working dollhouse kitchen set. I feel like I could use like a little mini roller right now. I think for this, I'm going to just need to like roll it out and smush it down and carve it out. That looks like a good shape. I'm gonna smush it out. Okay, let me try to carve this out now. That does not look right. Yes, it does, but it's fine. Nope, I don't think that looks right. Dang. That has to be the most uneven tree I've ever seen in my life. Can we save it? I don't know, maybe. I feel like what's making it uneven is the branches right here, which they really don't go out that far because it's a um cake. And then I think I need to go up with this a little bit. I think the top is honestly good, just this bottom part here. So I'm just gonna cut it off. I feel like this charm is definitely gonna be one that I'm going to want to use again. So before I put it on the nail, I might see if I can find my glue gun so that I can make a mold of it and do it again. I feel like this looks pretty good. So I'm just gonna take all of this off and then I'm gonna just flash cure this so that we can sort of build off of it without messing it up. There we are. Ooh, that's looking actually pretty good. So pretty. I can fix that little line later. So again, I'm gonna just flash cure that really quick and then we can do the trunk. Okay, yay, I love that. Okay, now let's get this off. I'm gonna cure the other side. It needs just a little bit cleaning up. I was gonna use my file to clean it up, but then I remembered the other day I was at this place called A Shop of Things in Nashville and look at how cute these are. They're little itty bitty mini nail files. And of course I had to get them. I don't know how well the glitter ones would work. Like look at how tiny it can probably get in all the little crevices without having to like do it with my drill. It looks so cute. So I had a couple ideas in terms of like the frosting and stuff like that. So I don't know if you guys remember the video where I like made my nails into cake, but I still have that frosting stuff. So I was almost thinking about like maybe putting a thin layer on it like that, or I could also just use gel. I guess I should see how like thick this stuff is or if it'll work. Ooh, I mean, I don't know, it could work, but also I'm not sure if it'll look much different from gel polish. I don't think that will, but for the red frosting, I definitely have this red for it. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna just use a thicker white for this, and I'll probably try to leave some of those texture marks. I don't really like want it to thin out too much in this case. Do not touch the frosting. Perfect. I almost completely forgot about the sprinkles and actually thankfully the sprinkles are probably gonna be super easy to put on. Pretty much all I'm gonna do for these is just like roll it out, cure it, and then I'll crack the clay apart after and put it on top of our tree. That's probably enough. Let's see if we can like crack these. No? Okay, maybe I need to re-cure. I thought I cured it for long enough, but okay. There we go, that's a little better. Kinda like little sprinkles. I'm a little torn on what to do with this. I was thinking shiny, but looking at them, they're not really shiny. So I think I'm gonna put matte on it and then the frosting will probably turn out somewhat shiny. So, okay, I'm gonna put just a top coat and we'll put these sprinkles on. I was super relieved to see that the sprinkles go on before the frosting because the frosting is like some sort of clay. So it's not like we can cure it on. And I wasn't exactly excited about having to wait for the frosting to dry before we could put on like the sprinkles and a top coat and put it on the nail, you know, but that's not gonna be the case. Thankfully. All right, love it. That looks so cute. So I'm gonna cure it and then we can put on our frosting. It looks so perfect. Okay, I cannot mess up the frosting. I'm really nervous. I'm gonna just test the frosting first. So if I remember correctly, oh my gosh, yep. This stuff comes out like so quick. So I need to like put that or like kind of like in the air to make, no. Ooh, that's kind of thick, don't you think? Okay, I can do it. I can do it. Okay, what do we think? Okay. 
so obviously I panicked and took that all off. I felt like if it dried, it was gonna just like look bad. I realized I was just kind of doing a regular like little like mm, across when it really needed to be in like almost like a drippy swirl. Kind of want to do it in gel now. I feel like it's just like not giving what I want it to give. So let me see with gel now. Okay, yep, that's better. It's just a little bit difficult going over the sprinkles, but it's fine. And now I'm just going to touch everything up and do the sides because the sides definitely also usually get it. All right, the charm is done. It looks so cute. I did find my glue gun, but I'm so nervous to do it because I don't want to ruin it. Like what if it doesn't come out? Uh, I don't know. So I'm going to think about it while we do just the base of the nail, which is probably the most simple part of this nail and all of the other designs. It is just a red jelly nail. It does look sort of pink in the picture, but they clarified it's red jelly. And that makes sense because I feel like if you put red over purplish, it'll look kind of pink. So I'm gonna use this and we'll just do one nice layer of this red jelly, which I think will go absolutely perfect with the charm. I'm gonna let that even out. We'll cure it, put a top coat and oh, look at how cute. Then just a top coat. Then let's just see how it'll look. Oh, I love it. I feel like the Christmas tree shape actually came out really good on this one, which is why I'm wanting to make a mold of it. I feel like in the future, I could really use that. Just like a pre-done Christmas shape. Here is what it looks like in case for some reason this ruins the charm. I will literally cry. I'm actually just going to mold the back of it so that I have the Christmas tree shape. I feel like I won't always want like all the little sprinkles and stuff. So let's see if we can do that. Have my hot glue, although I should probably heat it up. Okay, are we ready? So I'm just going to, and then, oh no, okay, nervous. Here we go. No, 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 no. Okay, stop touching at me. Don't worry, it's not that hot. The mark of someone that's impatient. I think it's probably all dry. Okay, yep, not even hot anymore. <gasps> Yay, perfect. I'm so glad it came out. Should we just test it really quick? Just really quick. Using Secret Nail Affairs acrylic from last year. I felt like I wanted to see a pink sparkly tree. Now we wait. Should be dry, let's see. Cute! Imagine with the edges cleaned up. So easy. Cleaned up a bit. Look how cute, I love that. I am so glad that I tried it. And now I have a little tree mold that I can save and use next year maybe. Or again, I don't know, it's still, is it early in the middle of the month? Nope, I think Christmas is next week. Anyway, very happy with that. But that distracted me from the fact that I never even put this charm on here. So let's attach it now. Love it. Last but not least, I wanted to end on just some hand-drawn nail art. I kind of realized now that I pretty much did mostly sculpting in this video and I really want to do some nail art. So I'm going to be doing this one from Dark Princess 000 classic Nightmare Before Christmas, Jack Skellington. I don't know if I've ever done a Nightmare Before Christmas nail, but it gets submitted all the time. So this is the literal perfect time to do it. And in my head, it's gonna take me like half an hour, but I know it'll probably take me like two hours. So let's dive right into that. For this, I'm gonna be using my charm gels, the black and the white, because they are very pigmented. And then I'm also gonna need a red. So I'm gonna use this one from Eno Couture. I use this one all the time, because it's like the perfect red. But first I am just going to do a white base. Then for nail art, I used to put down a matte top coat, but I was watching someone and they do a base and then just dry it out really well with alcohol. And that seems to work very well also to make sure everything is super smooth for nail art. And I'm gonna do that. I'd like using the matte top coat, but also sometimes because it is matte, it can stain. So there's my base and then I'll cure it and wipe it. We'll start by mapping off the base, which looks like it would start about where my nail would end. Okay, about there. Okay, so I feel like that was like the most defining line. So now I'm just going to map out where everything else is gonna go. Okay, so we have a couple little different parts of the hat. So we have like the red up here, and then we'll have some of the white. I think that looks about right. And then the suit. 
this is a pretty small nail. So I feel like all of these lines are gonna seem extra small to me. Okay, I feel like the suit pretty good. Need to make the top line though, but I'm gonna just cure that. Instead of doing the face last, like I really want to, I'm just going to do it head on now. That way everything else will hopefully be a breeze. The eyes are always the absolute hardest part. Okay, honestly, that looks right to me, but I could be very wrong, but I'm going to fill them in and just hope. It's kind of hard to tell with like just an outline, but hopefully at least this is like a good base for it. And if I need to make them bigger, I can do that. But I feel like they're actually at least on the same level. Like one's not super high or anything like that. They might need to be made a little bit bigger, but I feel like we could work with this. They're not quite the exact eyes, but I think they actually look okay. Do you guys think? Like they look almost somewhat similar. I could probably clean them up a little bit with some white, but I'm not going to clean them up with any alcohol or anything like that because I think I'm at a big risk for it like smudging. So I'm just gonna leave it like this and then clean up with white if needed. Let's see about the nose next. Okay, not bad. I'm using for the tiny, tiny little details this Valentino brush doesn't say what number it is, but it's one of the little tiny ones. Well, that definitely looks creepy. I think it needs to be a little bit thinner though. Just so hard. I need like a literally a single bristle brush. Do they make those? I'm sure they do. All right, let me maybe a longer brush. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, I feel like those are a little too long, so I'm gonna try to clean it up, but I'm not sure if I'll be able to. I might have to redo all of the stitches. Hopefully not. I think the hardest part is done. I actually think it looks okay. So I'm gonna start filling in the red now. I feel like I'm gonna definitely have to touch things up, but that's totally fine. I'll do that at the end. I'll probably have to go over some black outlines anyway, so no big deal. I could just totally be spacing, but I don't think I've ever done a Nightmare Before Christmas nail, have I? I've gotten tons and tons and tons of submissions for Draw My Nails for it, but I just don't ever think I've ever done one. So I feel like I'm glad this was the time. And this drawing was drawn incredibly well to be able to replicate. So thank you for that. All right, I've done a bit of touching up here and there. So I'm gonna just do a wipe before I put a top coat on. It's a little shaky. However, I feel like you can definitely tell what it is. I would say the face is actually probably one of the better like character faces I've done. Definitely not as off brand as usual, thankfully. I could clean up down here a little bit, but that's okay. I feel like it adds to the effect, the waviness. Thank you guys so much for watching. I know these videos can get kind of long, so I hope you guys like them like that. Please make sure to give this video a like so I know you guys want me to continue making this series. I will of course leave my comparisons and after shots here in a moment. But once again, thank you guys so much for watching and for submitting your guys' amazing ideas. It is really a privilege to be able to get to see all of these ideas and make them come to life and I really appreciate it. And of course, always thank you guys so much for watching. I am incredibly impressed. Thank you. You look amazing. Thank you. You did a great job.